On this Wednesday in Los Angeles, we take you live to a pursuit. It is now on surface streets. It's been on the freeway. Dangerous pursuit, believed to be a stolen car. The lights are off right now, and this driver going slowly now in this neighborhood, but has been going 70 miles per hour on these surface streets. So we're looking in the Panorama City area right now. This has been going on for some time on the freeway. This driver going over 100 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour on some of the side streets. Uh, this older Honda Accord, we believe that it's stolen. We believe that there are two people inside of this vehicle. Right now, it looks like we do not see officers close on this person. Person's tail. Uh, they certainly are following he or she from the air. Now the lights are back on. That's good because mm. that makes it a little bit more safe for drivers in the area. At 10 o'clock at night, you don't expect to see crowded streets, but we do see some folks on the streets. We yeah. see this person driving through stop signs, not worrying about that. You see somebody walking their dog. A reminder uh, at this particular area, uh, there could be plenty of people still out on a pretty nice night in Southern California, and you worry about them uh, when you have these pursuits that are oftentimes unpredictable Let's as we drive past this park. Yeah, let's bring in our, our police expert, retired officer and pilot, Tim Lynn. So, Tim, you've been following this one. Uh, what do you make of this pursuit? We think there are two people in that car. Well, it's been a wild one for the last uh, 35 minutes or so. It's just wound its way through the freeways, but now on surface streets. Yeah, this is your typical stolen vehicle uh, type pursuit where they just get into an area, start circling and turning off their lights. And the driving is so dangerous that LAPD has backed off when in the surveillance mode and now uh, their helicopter is high overhead watching, but you can see there's no night sun down on the uh, uh, vehicle so that to not to alert the suspect to their presence, but it doesn't slow them down. It, when they go in these surveillance modes, it doesn't slow down suspects. They keep driving crazy, turning off their lights, lights turning off. on their lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now going through a dark area, the neighborhood here blacked out, so you would never see him coming if you're uh, another motorist on the road. And because there aren't uh, lights and sirens behind this driver, um, people really don't necessarily know that he's coming. As we now go uh, in this area, uh, starting to pick up the speed a little bit, uh, it, it looked like at a short time ago the driver hit the curb at one point. Uh, there may be something a little off in the front of this vehicle. Uh, not the newest of, or most expensive of the vehicle options, uh, but this uh, appears to be the vehicle that was stolen. And Tim, we don't really know uh, why it was stolen or, or sort of the background there, but that can make it more challenging for law enforcement as well if they don't know who's in the vehicle. That's correct, because if, you know, if it's a vehicle, they have an idea who's in it, they can get a hold of family members, get a hold of phone numbers. But in this case, you have no idea who's in that car. And driving in these dark areas, you see it disappears on the screen. Uh, the Johnny truck probably has no ideas there because there's no lights behind him. So you imagine coming through an intersection and you depend on lights at night, and next thing you know, you have this little car coming up on you. And being a smaller, older car, what condition is it and how well can this person drive it and how well can it stop should there be an emergency in front of him? So uh, it's very dangerous in the situation when you get them on surface streets like this and they're driving high rates of speed. He was up to 110 miles an hour on the freeway earlier. So, you know, no yeah. telling how those really brakes are on that car. Truck but, yeah, right there. Right on, feel right the on top of them. Feel the intimidation right. there, that driver on your tail there. And then you might not yeah, really we, know it without the lights, as, as Tim points out. So Alex Michelson, Christine Devine here. Uh, we're watching breaking news here on the Fox 11 News at 10. And we get a better look now at the front of the vehicle. It's clear that there are at least two people inside uh, from that angle right there. It looks like it is a male driver uh, that is making his way uh, on the road here. Um, and now we see that LAPD it looks like helicopter above. Um, talk about, Tim, the, the, the tactics at play here, the decision whether to have uh, patrol cars trailing this person or whether to just do this from the air. Uh, looks like we might be coming Stop to an him. end here as he comes to the side. Oh, there's people on the sidewalk that he's talking to. Yeah, the tactic here is they've gone into surveillance mode because of the driver's activity on the, free, on the roads, driving so fast and putting uh, the public in danger. So hopefully you see the night sun coming back on as he made that stop. So they're looking for somebody to come out of the car so they can keep an eye on them once they got into the houses. But uh, at this point, they're just trying to stay with the car. They're radioing its location. The other units in the area are staying out of the way 
but staying close enough to respond quickly should somebody go to foot uh, out of this vehicle. But the air unit's doing uh, the best they can to keep eyes on it. I can tell you from personal experience, when these vehicles are blacked out and they get into these dark areas, it's almost impossible to see them. But luckily, his uh, parking lights are on, so that's helping out quite a bit. But even for the officer in the helicopter, he's more than likely on a uh, infrared system to keep an eye on this carcass. In darkness like that with a blacked out car, it's almost impossible to see. So we know this started in the Van Nuys area, reported stolen vehicle. This driver was on the freeways, now on these surface streets. And, and Tim, for a minute here, staying in this Panorama City area, North Hills area, does that tell you anything as an officer with your history? And we talked a lot about suspects going to an area that is comfortable and familiar to them. Right. Having the vehicle, having it start in this area as well, and it went so far away, then came back to the same area, uh -oh. is a pretty good indication of what's going on. But they're getting out onto the major street here. Uh, yeah, it's uh, this is where he picked up a lot of speed when he had room to run. But you see, Pulling over. stopping. Okay, are we going to get out? Are we going to get out? So now we're stopped. Getting out. Driver's trying to blend out. in, perhaps. Or are they going to go Absolutely. run in different right. directions? Okay, running in the you same see, direction. Going in this alley, you wonder if this if they're connected to this neighborhood at all, why they chose to go here, uh, that night sun on them, so it's not like they're in a sort of a dark space, uh, and you wonder if we're going to start to see cruisers. So we're really moving here. It looks like it may be a male and a female. Uh, it looks like a purse, yeah. Yeah, and, and you wonder about their connection to this community or not. Maybe at this point they're starting to get tired. Uh, and and you you hope that they oh, don't have somebody. There's a unit, somebody there's there's a unit some close by. There, yeah, you see their hands homeless? are going up. So there's got to be a unit close by. Is that a homeless are they encampment? gesturing to the helicopter that they are willing to give up? Uh, I, I, don't I don't know. Don't I see any units the unit. there. Huh. Give it a second. I bet they're going to come rolling up. But uh, yeah, the unit right now, the uh, air unit is calling out their uh, position. Now they probably look Whoa. back and saw somebody coming up the alley and picked up speed. Uh, so, yeah, they're going to try to blend in, and now they're going to try to go to cover. And normally what suspects will do is run until they hit resistance, and then they'll turn. And then once they get into an area where they feel safe, they'll hunker down. But uh, these two are sticking together, which is helping. Uh, Area is staying right on them. Tim, almost not sticking together. That male is taken off, almost yeah, leaving, leaving that female behind. in the dust there. He was yeah. the driver there. Uh, obviously, he's working very hard to get away. Uh, police want to catch the driver, of course, because we don't know was she a willing participant or not. Obviously, she's running with so, him, yeah. so I'm going to assume willing. It looked like it certainly looked that way, like they knew each other, yeah. but who knows? Uh, so, the, yeah, you don't have the night sun on both of them, so it may be easier for her uh, to get away. This guy's got a nice jog in front of him, uh, and it looks like he may be running out of space here. Let's see. Uh, where exactly we are, maybe along the L.A. River uh, here uh, in Panorama City. Uh, and so we have seen the combination of two of L.A.'s, you know, signature stories, a high-speed pursuit and homeless encampments, uh, both, you know, coming together. Uh, and now this person, uh, and I don't know if that's the person we were looking at. Uh, obviously, it's hard not only for the LAPD chopper, it's hard for Sky Fox at night. Um, to, to sort of figure this out and figure out who exactly that is, although that is the LAPD night sun that is shining on somebody. You feel bad if there's just sort of a random guy who happens mm -hmm. to be walking uh, or maybe walking home at this point in night because this would not be the neighborhood at the time that you would want to be walking in. Um, but you wonder, did they, uh, did they lose their suspect here? The, the challenge, Tim, in, in doing this, in, in not having the cruisers right behind, is when they get when they get out, um, you know, there's nobody there to arrest them. That's right, and that's the problem with having a surveillance get too far ahead of the trailing units when they get out on foot. In that case, there, uh, he goes up underneath a tree, and then another person pops out. Now the Whoa. observer on the oh, he okay. might be standing right there, there underneath is. the uh, yeah underneath, underneath the uh, pedway there. You but know, if you say they change yeah. clothes on you. If you're that suspect, though, you've got to feel that night sun over you. You know they are tracking every move if they can. Not too many places to hide there in what looks to be some kind of wash. Yeah, and if you get, if you get stuck in that wash, yeah, that's uh, not, not good either. That does not look uh, very sanitary. Oh, there we go, running, running back. Yeah. Going back the original it, it, direction. Yeah, trees are very tough for observers, but uh, they're trained to do this, and they have many hours behind that spotlight. So... Uh, when he picked up on that subject coming out not wearing the same color jacket 
you have to make the determination, is it just a person that changed clothes on you, or is this a separate person? And then he made the determination to go back and look and uh, came up with the right suspect underneath the uh, bridge. But uh, as you see, this guy is just continuing to run. They're going to stay with this person because they were the driver, and they're the ones uh, that the prosecution will, uh, will go for. Okay, but, beware. Uh, Here, we'll this is it. what I was about to say. Beware if you're one of these neighborhoods uh, be, that this yeah. guy could try to get into somebody's backyard and climb a fence. If, if you uh, know people in, in this particular neighborhood, give them a heads up. Uh, that this uh, could be headed their way. Um, uh, this is where things can get dangerous if he's able to. We're looking near Roscoe Boulevard and Kester right now. Um, so if you're living in this neighborhood, make sure your doors are locked right now. We don't know if this individual is armed or not. Uh, we don't have an indication so far that he is, but you don't know how this vehicle was stolen. Uh, and we also, uh, it is clear that this person is desperate and trying to get away. And so for neighbors in this area, the idea of this guy scaling a fence and trying to get into somebody's home right now uh, is, you know, a terrifying potential for somebody who's probably at home and just maybe watching some TV and trying to go to bed at 10 o'clock at night uh, on this Wednesday evening, Christine. Yeah, it looks like we're not sure where this suspect is right now, if they're hiding under the trees, if they actually were able to climb that wall there. It looks like they had some difficulty in trying to do that. As they, they were running along, they didn't seem to want to climb any of the other fences or walls there. Uh, but yeah, if that person gets in that yard there, a lot of places it looks like they could be hiding. Yeah, lots and, of trees. And kind of wait out that night sun or, or, you know, escape to other areas that, you know, are not overly visible right now. Knock on the door. It is late at night. you you got to think at 10, 12 at night. Most people have their doors locked, I would think. But you never know. Someone's coming home. Slide, like a sliding person. glass door in the backyard or something. Dogs might make some noise. Yeah. Um, and do you hide in that tree or under the tree or, um, or, or something else or hide long enough where they move the helicopter and then you're able to get away? Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like the person has multiple clothes because it looks like they've already done one outfit change uh, and they had some sort of bag with them. So you wonder what that's about as well. Um, but this, we're looking now at the challenge of doing this at night. Um, is this suspect on the run again? Kind of. Uh, tough to tell exactly from this shot, but uh, hopefully the night sun can find this person and this thing can be taken, uh, brought to an end. It's interesting, Tim Lynn, um, who is, you know, a police specialist in all this, we still haven't seen officers on the ground. Uh, this person has been in this area for a while. The overheads have been there for a while. Why aren't we seeing officers nearby? I'm surprised at that. Normally in a situation like this, if they come in very quickly because they're... <laughs> Uh, trailing the area and this guy doing those box patterns during the pursuit uh, is the one it's what keeps them in the area so, I, so I'm surprised they're not there but the observer in the area and right now there's a unit right there taking he's setting a perimeter right now you may not see units right at the scene but he is setting up a box around and that might be another unit right there parked uh, with his brake lights you see the headlights brake lights and he's setting up a box around the suspects to contain the area so we know he's in this area within these three houses and so he's going to set up that containment and once he gets containment set then they will bring in uh, either a canine or a, foot, a regular foot search team to go in there and look. And now I want to remind you that also he's not just using that night sunlight, he's also using an infrared right. sensor because the, the systems are linked together. So wherever the camera looks, the light will look as well. So he's doing both at this point, checking. And he can probably see the guy's heat through the trees because you'll get little bits of peak, as we call peak of heat, so where you see just a little piece of him as you go around through the limbs and behind the tree. But with a night sun and the naked eye, it's hard to see them, but that uh, infrared is very sensitive, and you can pick up on the heat from the subject. So right now, that observer is doing a bunch of things. He's keeping an eye on that suspect, and he's also calling the units into the uh, area to seal this area off, and that's okay. probably the mode they're so in right now. So somebody's walking here. Down. Uh, yeah, you yeah, see that. Walking down the, uh, you see that, but there's somebody in a sweatshirt. And a flashlight there, too. Looks I like mean, that could be police there with that flashlight. And is that the suspect there? 
Uh, or is that, I mean, it'd be a weird place to be walking at this time of night. Uh, but, but just all those homeless tents. Yeah, yeah and, and that, it, that's a good point. Um, was, did all this commotion wake up homeless people that may be trying to sleep in their tent? Uh, they don't quite know what's going on, and uh, they're trying to get out of that area too. I mean, that's also uh, a possibility there. Um, you mm -hmm. imagine that in the area, some of those officers that have now arrived uh, are probably loudly um, offering commands uh, through the, the speaker systems of their vehicles uh, to try to give people a heads up and to try to get this person to surrender. So remember, Christine, we, we got two people, right? Uh, there, yeah, there was the was driver, mm -hmm. and we haven't thought about or looked at the female uh, that came out of this for a while, too. Uh, but we don't know what happened to her, if she's in custody, um, or if she was maybe perhaps even able to get away. Tim, I wonder ask you about that so obviously they did a foot bail of the vehicle i don't know if you were ever a canine officer but i'm sure you know enough about it do they send the canine to that vehicle first to get a scent because we're looking for a male and a female here only if it's trained for tracking and yes i was a canine officer for five years and my dog was trained to uh, track and yeah you could do that but in this situation you have a perimeter that was set up probably pretty quickly so what I would be uh, concerned with as a canine unit is to make sure the perimeter is set and locked down and then start a systematic searches of these backyards. And I'm just watching the way the observer in the helicopter is working that one yard. He's pretty confident that that suspect is in that backyard or that area there. So he's trying to hold it down, keep that person from running uh, too much with the light on, but using that infrared to keep an eye on him. But the canine officer at this point wouldn't really do a track. It's kind of an unknown direction. Uh, operation to where the suspect left the car you have no idea which way he went if your car if your canine is trained for tracking you could do it that way but in this situation here the perimeter is being set and the procedure will be once it's set put up a search team and then go in and look for the suspect if the observer has eyes on him and they, where he's at in that backyard they'll send an arrest team back and uh, try to take him into custody that way but you can see units are now coming on scene and it's getting pretty uh, busy down there. So if you're just joining us, you're watching the Fox 11 News at 10 o'clock. Alex Michelson, Christine Devine, Tim Lynn joining our coverage tonight, police specialist and veteran in the chopper as well. Uh, we are looking uh, at the end of a pursuit uh, that led to a foot bail. Uh, the foot bail with both of the suspects uh, leaving the vehicle at a time when officers were not on the ground. They were able to run away, run for some time by this wash. Uh, the woman... Uh, seemingly got away unless she's been arrested we're not sure we were following the male driver um, we still don't know exactly where he is there's seems to be a lot of focus on this one backyard uh, with the uh, LAPD spotlight there as Tim Lynn pointed out they also have infrared so they're able to see stuff that we're not able to see which may give an indication of heat or where this suspect is was he able to climb that fence is he there uh, underneath some of those trees did he get into one of these homes there we don't know that um, we are keeping an eye on this but there does seem to be a lot of focus on that particular home that particular backyard for some time uh, and we hope uh, for the safety of the folks that are in that home right now. Christine, we... Exactly. We, yeah, and, and so what, so I guess uh, you, you've been talking about this setting up of a perimeter. I mean, what is the, what are the next steps that we should expect, Tim? Yeah, well, the next step you'll see is a supervisor coming on scene setting up a command post, and at that point they would establish who the search team would be with the canine. They may have to wait a while for a canine unit to get there. If, in fact, they're going to use a canine, I, I'm not sure how much the uh, LAPD canine policy has changed over the last uh, couple of years, but there's possibly they're going to have to, if they cannot authorize a canine, they'll have to use uh, the officers to go back there and hand search. But in this situation, the sergeant's going to come on scene, take control, if they make sure that the uh, area is uh, locked down, get the team together, and then start uh, going door to door, working your way through here. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. But uh, luck, for their luck, for the officers, that Pacoima wash that's running through there to the west, uh, that's a, a real good barrier that if he tries to cross, you're going to see him. So just a matter of getting him in that area and getting him uh, getting him uh, held in there to where units can to go ahead. Now, what we got stopped here, see, it just might be... Uh, Is that the uh, one? Might be the, there, there oh, you go. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
It, or at Look least at it certainly looks like her. I mean, sometimes yeah. the wrong person is detained. <laughs> Someone in cuffs. But it certainly looks yeah. like the woman that, that we were looking for earlier. Um, and, uh, you know, they're talking to her. And that also, uh, Tim, may give them some more intel in terms of the guy that they're searching for, depending on how much she may or may not be saying. Exactly. If she's cooperating, she could very well call the suspect and say, hey, give it up. You're surrounded. So, you know, give, you know, give yourself up, go to jail and, and uh, take the, take the uh, consequences that comes from this. But uh, and he then again may be on the phone trying to get a ride out of the area because that's a real problem that you have is people will get in these pursuits, get in the neighborhoods, hunker down, call for help. And then some person who helps them out will drive in and they'll sneak out and get into a car and drive out of the perimeter. That's why these officers will stop everybody coming in and anybody leaving to make sure the suspect's not in the car. But you can see this, uh, this observer, the TFO, tactical flight officer in the uh, area and is sticking with his house here. And the one thing I'd be worried about right now, if I didn't have eyes on him or a heat source back there, I'd be worried about him getting into that house yep. because mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a real problem you have with people breaking into houses when they're being chased. And I've had numerous situations like that where suspect will go over a fence, go into a backyard and find an open door. And next thing yeah. you know, you've got a, a barricade. All right, Tim, we're going to sign off with you right now. We want to bring our viewers okay. some other news as uh, LAPD is working to find these pursuit suspects. They got the female looking for the male here. I'm guessing the residents who are in that neighborhood have felt the sounds of that helicopter, understand there's some kind of police activity in their neighborhood, urging them to stay safe and, of course, lock their doors. If we get more information, we'll bring it to you.